don't want my son to see that video game. Play something else so I'll have my husband arrest you. R slash Entitled Parents. Our first story we'll be reading today. Karen demands I play a more appropriate game so her son can watch. Threatens to have her husband arrest me when I resist. From user Star Spangled. And after that, a school term with an entitled teacher and his little brat. From user True Madness. After that, even Santa is only human. From user Wizard AU. And then we'll be wrapping up with Entitled Mom Gets Mad Because My Girlfriend Is Asleep on a Four Hour Flight and Then Asks for an Upgraded Seat. From user Skadosh. Thank you so much to our authors for letting us read your stories. And if you're an author who would like to hear your stories read next, please submit them to the r slash Mr. Reddit subreddit. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a thing. Karen demands I play a more appropriate game so her son can watch. Threatens to have her husband arrest me when I resist. Here's some background info. I go to university in Florida, but my family lives in New Jersey, and I fly back and forth between the two a lot. So it was only inevitable that I run into an entitled mom on a plane at some point. One more quick bit about me before we actually get into the story. I'm 21 years old, but when I'm clean shaven, which is really rare, I look significantly younger. And it just so happens that I felt like shaving a few hours before my flight. This sounds like an obscure detail, but trust me, it comes into play later when Karen mistakes me for a teenager. Cast. We've got me. We've got Karen. The flight attendant. The random passenger on the other side of the aisle. The army dude. This happened in the first week of May when my spring semester ended. I never pay the extra money to choose my own seat, so this always results in me getting one assigned to me. I was flying with Spirit. I usually fly with them or Frontier, and this is how seating works for them. So most of the time I end up in a middle seat, since all the people who choose their own seats would obviously never pick that. However, I was lucky enough to score a window seat this time. This is an extremely popular opinion, but the window seat is my favorite plane seat. Enter Karen and her son. Karen looks exactly how you would expect, and her son is most likely no older than 8 years old. Neither of them made any effort to greet me or introduce themselves, which I didn't mind one bit since I didn't try to talk to them either. I was already playing The Binding of Isaac on my Nintendo Switch with earbuds plugged in, which clearly signaled that I wasn't in the mood to socialize. My flight was pretty early in the morning and I was really tired. Karen sat in the aisle seat and her son sat in the middle between us. Now for those of you who have never heard of The Binding of Isaac, it's rated M, but the graphics are very cartoony and mild. It shouldn't even be rated M if you ask me. Although I have had people disagree with me on this, maybe I just have a really good tolerance, but not if you ask Karen. Because about a half hour into the flight, I feel a tap on my left shoulder. I was sitting on the right side of the plane. I took my left earbud out and turned to Karen, and that's when this conversation started. Yeah? What's going on? Me? Would you mind playing a different game? Why? My son is watching you play that game, and it's creeping him out. It isn't appropriate for him. It's the only game I have, so there isn't really anything I can do about that. Of course, this was a cold-faced lie. Ask anyone I've ever talked to. If I have one defining characteristic, it's my active and enthusiastic hobby of game collecting. But Karen didn't need to know that. I just didn't see the reason to let the way I entertain myself be dictated by an 8-year-old, especially one that I've never met and never will meet again. Sure there is. You can stop playing. And sit here for two hours, staring out the window with no other way to entertain myself? If it's all the same to you, I'd rather not. At this point, Karen is starting to raise her voice. Well, it's not the same to me. You need to learn to be aware of children around you. Now, a bit more background information about myself. I spent a lot of my time growing up around my little brother and a lot of other kids in my family who were considerably younger than me. 
and every time I wanted to do something I enjoyed, my parents would always make me dumb it down somehow because I needed to include the other kids. So, long story short, I've really grown to resent commands like this, and hearing one from a stranger caused me to grow especially hostile. Oh yeah, and I hate kids. No, I don't. Your son needs to learn that the world doesn't revolve around him and not poke his nose around where it doesn't belong. In hindsight, I was a pretty big jerk, but I don't exactly have the greatest social skills in the world. Also, Karen was a jerk first and a much bigger one, as you'll see later on in the story, so I like to think I was justified. How dare you talk back to an adult that way? I give my peers the same amount of respect that they give me. I've done nothing but sit here and mind my own business, and I would appreciate the same courtesy. I'm not one of your stupid peers. I'm not a teenager. Those statements contradict each other. I'm an adult too. No, you're not. Are you trying to argue with me over my own age? Then prove it to me. Of course, my first idea was to just say no and try to drop this foolish conversation. But then I realized that she would probably keep bugging me if I did, and my best chance at ending this was proving her wrong. So I took out my driver's license. I began to reach over to hand it to her, but I was barely halfway through the motion before she impatiently snatched it from my hand. This is fake. My husband is a cop. I'm having you arrested when he picks us up at the airport. Well, it's real, so have fun wasting both of our family's time. Now, in Karen's defense, I was named after my dad, who was named after his dad, who was named after his dad. So my name does sound like that of an older person and is very rare in my generation. So I guess it's somewhat plausible for her to think that I got a fake ID with an older person's information on it. No, it's not. I bet you use this to get into bars, just like everyone else your age. Well, yes, I do use my ID to get into bars, and so do most other 21-year-olds, so that makes perfect sense to me. Shut up, you criminal! I'm not giving it back. That's some intense language. You need to learn to be aware of the children around you. Karen was clearly furious, but didn't even want to entertain me with a response, so I didn't say anything else either. At this point, she was quite literally stealing my ID, and I obviously had to do something about it, so I decided to wait for a flight attendant to come by so I could tell her what was going on. In the meantime, I decided to continue playing The Binding of Isaac, knowing full well that this would upset Karen, since it was the original root of the situation, and it visibly did. However, Instead of saying something to me again, she decided to push the button that summons flight attendants. In hindsight, I should have done that when she stole my license, but I forgot that was an option at the time. I have my earbuds attached to the game as usual, but this time the volume is all the way down so I can eavesdrop while looking like I have no idea what's going on. Enter flight attendant. Excuse me? That kid in the window seat is disturbing my son. Please make him stop. Flight attendant looks at me skeptically. He doesn't look like he's disturbing anyone. Yes, he is. He's playing an inappropriate game and my son is watching. Make him stop. There isn't a policy against video games as long as they're in airplane mode. If your son doesn't like the game, he shouldn't be watching it. Karen is probably about to say something but now I decide to butt in. Does that mean that there isn't a policy that allows someone to steal my driver's license if I'm playing a game that she deems inappropriate? Um, no, there's nothing like that. Well, clearly she didn't get the memo. Flight attendant turns to Karen. Ma'am, did you steal his driver's license? What? No, how dare you accuse me of such a thing? Are you really going to believe a stupid kid over me? I give flight attendant a smirk and she shoots me back an understanding smirk. At this point, she realizes that she'll need to appease Karen until the time is right. Okay, ma'am. Give me a few minutes to speak to the captain. I'll see what I can do about your situation. Flight attendant walks away and comes back to our row a few minutes later. There's a seat available in first class. 
or whatever spirit calls those seats. I'm usually not allowed to usher passengers there, but we can make an exception after what you've had to deal with. Oh, thank God. This rotten teenager has been ruining my flight. I wasn't talking to you, ma'am. Looks over at me. Sir, would you like to move up to first class with no extra charge? I flash a grin at Karen, then look over to flight attendant and subtly shrug as I say, Well, if you insist, how can I say no? Great, and also, ma'am, it would probably be in your best interest to give him back his driver's license. He's lying. Why would I want a teenager's ID? Enter random person who stands up and starts talking to flight attendant. Excuse me, ma'am. I've been listening to what's been going on. This woman demanded to see his ID and then loudly announced that she wasn't giving it back. He's lying! Turns to random person. Of course you would take his side, you jerk. Now shut up and mind your own business. Now, two other nearby passengers stand up and start to take my side and random person's side. And the best part? They're both ladies. Now Karen can't even play that card. If you stole his driver's license, please give it back before you create more problems for us and our passengers and get arrested for theft when we land in Atlantic City. You can't arrest me. My husband is a cop and he's waiting for me at the airport. Then can you imagine how upset he would be when the first thing he has to do when he sees you is arrest you? Now, please make everyone's lives easier and give the license back so that no other trouble has to start. Karen reluctantly gives me back my ID without even making eye contact. Flight attendant escorted me to my new seat, next to army dude. While I was on the way, she told me that I could probably press charges against Karen for attempted theft and disturbing the peace with the flight attendant and a handful of passengers as witnesses, but I just shrugged it off and decided it wasn't worth it. Sure, Karen is a horrible person, but I have nothing to gain from having her arrested and disturbing the lives of the witnesses to possibly have part in a court case. Anyway, I sit down next to Army Dude. He pretty much looks exactly how you would expect. In full uniform, buzz cut, the whole nine yards. Of course, as soon as I sit down, I shake his hand, thank him for his service, all that good stuff. I also apologize that I had to disrupt his privacy because of an entitled mom. Army Dude chuckles. Nah, man, don't worry about it. Army Dude was actually very interested in hearing about what had happened with me and Karen, so I told him pretty much everything I've written above, and he got an absolute kick out of it. Turns out, he had also been a pretty big gamer before going into the military, so we had quite a bit to talk about in the remaining hour and 45 minutes of the flight. That's pretty much the story. The rest of the flight was pretty enjoyable. Kind of an anticlimactic ending, but oh well. I still don't regret not appeasing that brat. Next we've got a school term with an entitled teacher and his little brat. Good day, Mr. Reddit and the re-army. I always thought I was lucky that I haven't dealt with entitled parents. Then, after hearing a story about an entitled teacher, the story hit me, and boy was I wrong. So, some backstory. I moved a lot when I was a kid and have been to five different schools. My mom likes moving. This little story happened during school number two. It was a school in the middle of the country that was, I guess, a church before made into a school. I was at that time about seven to eight years old. Because the school had low numbers of kids, it never had a permanent teacher there. Teachers would come and go with each term, sometimes shorter. That's when Entitled Teacher came in. Now for this story, let's just call him Mr. E and his son, Little Brat for short. Little Brat and I never liked each other. For one, Brat was, to what I remember, smug, arrogant, and beyond full of himself. Had the talk and never had the walk. He would boast how he was good at something and I would burst his bubble in one form or another. Which leads to the second part. Mr. E. Brat would whine to his dad, and his dad would punish me and award his son, which led me to get upset and put more effort into embarrassing his son by defeating him in games or competitions, which leads Brat to whine to his dad, and, well, you get the idea. Now, the story. The cast should be obvious. 
Mr. E had announced that he was starting up a coloring in competition and the winner would get a prize. I, who loves drawing, still do, jumped at this. We had a choice of five different pictures, all of which from Disney movies. I found mine, a picture of Aladdin fighting Jafar as a giant cobra. I knew this movie back to front and I knew this scene. I knew the colors I needed. I knew every shade. I smiled and took my piece. That week I went to work on it using my textures, color markers for anyone outside of Australia. I stayed in the lines, used the proper shades. I put my all into it. By the time I was done, it was a near split image of the movie. The day of the competition came and I hand mine in. All the pictures were presented as us kids had looked how the others did. Some were pretty good for kids. One of which was done by a girl in my year. The same picture as mine just was done in pencil. Some of the colors were out of the lines, but if there was a second place winner, then she would have won it for sure. I told her I liked hers and did the same. Then I saw a little brat's picture. How can I describe it? Imagine a kid with a five minute attention span, serious color blindness, and did it during an earthquake. That was his piece. I knew there was no way he could have won. If only I remembered who the judge was. We all sit back down and Mr. E begins to talk. Thanks to all of our young artists out there. Many of you are quite talented, but only one can win. I was still smiling as I heard many of the other kids compliment my piece. So, the winner of the competition is... Little Brat! Stunned in silence, my mouth dropped as Little Brat jumps, cheering and celebrating that he won. Yay! I won! I won! Yes, you did, Little Brat! Thanks to all who entered! I was so confused. Mine, or at least the girl prior, should have won. I stand up and walk up to Mr. E. Um, Mr. E? Mr. E turns, glaring at me. What is it? I was just curious. How is it mine didn't win? I will never forget his answer. Oh, that's because you used textures, and this was a competition for pencils only. I was dumbfounded and returned to my seat. I still remember that I went over in my head what he said about the competition, and not once did he say it was pencil only. No doubt, some BS rule that he just made up so his son could win. Later that day, Little Brat was bragging to the other kids how he won, how he beat everyone. Then he sees me. Ha! Huh. Oh, P, see this? Still flaunting his work around like he won the lottery. I won, and you lost. You didn't win. Your dad handed you that. You're just jealous that yours didn't get picked. Yours got picked because your dad is the teacher. Several O's can be heard from the other kids, smiles on their faces. Even they knew I was right, and little brat ran off back to his dad. I got extra homework from Mr. E that day, no doubt for upsetting his baby. Little Brad and I continued our back and forth after that. Small things like how Little Brad bragged he was the fastest in school. We all race. I win only to get disqualified due to cheating in a leg race. Figure that one out, Reddit. And his son gets rewarded. The cycle continued until eventually the next term, Mr. E and Little Brad weren't there and the school closed shortly after for having low numbers. I never saw a little brat and Mr. E after that and don't know what happened to them. I hope little brat grew out of it and is now a decent man. For his dad, Mr. E, if you're reading this, take a long walk off a short pier. Oh, and Mr. Reddit, if you want to use this in your video, you have my full permission. <sighs> Next we've got, even Santa is only human. Hi, Mr. Reddit. We all know that entitled parents just don't get it. In my 10 years as the man in the red suit, I meet a lot of families. Some I remember more than others. Reading your post reminded me of one story which happened circa 2015. This is my first post on this subreddit, Australian. English is my first language. On laptop, 
on Dancer, on Prancer. My space bar will misfire occasionally, but I'll correct where I can. In Australia, Christmas happens in summer. Now, because we are part of the British Commonwealth, we historically celebrate Christmas like Europeans, which means fake snow and 30 degrees Celsius heat and setting puddings on fire. Who doesn't love that? It also means that every Karen takes their spawn for their annual pilgrimage to be traumatized by the man in the red suit. Please don't get me wrong. I really like being a mall Santa and I'm something of a method actor. I do my research on Santa's history and I even give him what I think is a regionally appropriate accent. Anyway, I'm rambling. Our story takes place in the Santa enclosure of an anonymous retail outlet. Being summer in Australia and spending six to eight hours in a padded suit with no brakes can test one's endurance. This year was a challenge as during my quiet periods, my land whale of a photographer on the shift would sit directly in the flow of my air conditioner, complain she was cold, turn off the fan, and forget to turn it back on when it was time to take a photo. The store may have been air conditioned, but I certainly wasn't. Thank God for my elves. Our cast. We've got me, friendly neighborhood Santa man. We've got Jan. If Karen had a sister, just as evil as her, it would be Jan. Not her real name. We've got Elf, the best elf ever. We've got Spawn 1, who's about 5. Spawn 2, who's about 4. And the Hatchling, who's a spawn who's about 3. And the store manager. Just like the internal instinct that American fathers have when someone has touched a thermostat, Karens and Jans worldwide have a powerful urge to get their kids to have a photo with Santa at the last possible minute. Six weeks before Christmas wasn't enough? The line this day was long, and we never would have gotten through it without Elf. Though young, she was very experienced and performed her duties perfectly. Now, laugh if you will, but elves perform a vital service to Santa photography. They're the middleman between the parents, photographers, and the Santa. They work hard when they know what they're doing and like their job. They earn their pay the hard way and almost never get the recognition they deserve. Enter Jan. Now, we have Karens in Australia, but as mentioned, I imagine Jan to be a sister of Karen, just as evil with a twist of being easily triggered and a dash of we only eat organic food vibe. I had dealt with this Jan on the previous year and gave a secret signal to Elf to watch out for this one as we knew she was going to be a handful. Hi there, would- Is this the same Santa as last year? It's the same Santa as every year. Jan grumbles. Ugh. Jan then instructs the kids to sit on my knee each. Normally this wouldn't be an issue, but our safety policy instructs us to ask them if they would like to sit on Santa's knee or offer them alternatives. There were plenty of choices. In the end, it's their decision. The kids wanted to sit on the padded boxes near my chair, and I offered them a seat. No, I want them to sit on his knee. I want spawn one here and spawn two there. I'm sorry, ma'am. We can't force the kids to sit on Santa's knee if they don't want to. We can still get a great photo where they are. Meanwhile, I'm asking the kids what they want for Christmas and getting the usual I don't know answers. You two, get on his knees. Now, I need to get Hatchling out of this stroller. The spawns know it's not worth arguing, and in true Santra tradition, I help them up to a lap each. They're not used to sitting like this and are having trouble keeping their balance. I steady them where I can, and then Jan brings out the Hatchling. One and a half, maybe two years old. Jan decides that the best place to put Hatchling is right in the middle. A huge no in our industry. I say in character. Oh, ho, ho, I'm sorry. I can't let little Hatchling sit there. Why not? It wouldn't look appropriate. And it looks like I need both hands to steady your sons. They're obviously not comfortable where they are. Maybe they can sit on the arms of the chair and I'll have both hands free to hold Hatchling. No, I want to put Hatchling there so my children are even. And would you stop using that ridiculous voice? They know Santa isn't real. Me still in character. 
then you're just holding up the line. Why did you even come for a photo with me? Jan shoots me a look that could redefine the triggered meme, and with the length of the line, Elf stepped in to hurry things along. They look like big, strong boys. They can keep their balance for a good photo while Santa holds Hatchling. Not wanting to deal with this anymore, Jan passes Hatchling to me, and I cradle him high enough for the camera to see. Hatchling has now realized who he has been passed to. The fear sets in hard, and Hatchling begins to bawl. Spawn 2 Mom, Hatchling is too close to me. I don't want him here. Hatchling, bawling is an understatement. No child in all my years as a Santa has ever had a pair of lungs that powerful. The screams filled the whole floor of the store. Spawn 1 I don't want to do this anymore. Jan Sit down, bloody smile. I'm going to get a photo this year. Spawn 1 I don't wanna... Leg flailing mill down. Spawn 2 Ah! Spawn 1 is kicking me! Q second mill down. The screams were enough to get the store manager out of her office. While I did put her in the cast, I can't remember what she said over the three screaming banshees I'm balancing. Believe it or not, I'm actually finding this funny. So are some of the parents in the line. Elf tried her best to get the kids attention, but the noise was so overwhelming they just weren't listening. They wanted out. Now. In the end, the screaming was too much. Jan gave in and the photographer took the screaming photo. I did see it floating around on the Today Show Australia's Facebook page, but haven't been able to find it since. Jan collected her brood and Hatchling's bawling stopped the moment Jan picked him up. They slunked off back into the abyss that belched them. From there, the rest of the day was a breeze with the occasional crier, but nothing I couldn't handle. Next we've got Entitled Mom Gets Mad Because My Girlfriend Is Asleep On A 4 Hour Flight And Then Asks For An Upgraded Seat Me and my girlfriend are 17 and decided it would be nice to go on holiday for a week during the school summer holiday. We spoke to both our parents and they said it was fine and my girlfriend's mom even said they would help us pay for it. So, you know I'm on mobile. The cast. We've got me. My girlfriend, entitled mom, entitled kid, the flight attendant, and the flight attendant's manager. The story. Me and girlfriend booked a holiday in Cyprus, which included our flight and an all-exclusive holiday village apartment. We had a late night flight, so we got to the airport for about 7 p.m. to allow us time to have some dinner before our flight. When we got on the plane, we found our seats and I put our bags in the storage area above us. Since it was a very late flight, girlfriend was very tired and I could see this, but I just thought no biggie. She can fall asleep on me if she wants. When I saw who was behind us, I just knew this was an entitled mom. We took off with no problem, surprisingly seeing as we had very good seats. We were about two hours in the flight and girlfriend is lying on my shoulder while we watch some Netflix with my earphones in. One earphone for girlfriend and one for me. I looked down to look at girlfriend and realized she was asleep. But like I said earlier, who cares? Turns out, Entitled Mom does care. From behind me, I hear Entitled Mom clear her throat and then, Excuse me? I turn around and this is how the conversation went. What? Why is she asleep? Because she's tired, kind of sarcastically. Well, why does she have to fall asleep? It's only a four hour flight. Because she was tired? I don't mind and she knows that. And can you please lower your voice? She's trying to sleep. Entitled mom starts shouting. Don't tell me to lower my voice, young man. Girlfriend wakes up and says to me, Hey babe, what's going on? This jerk has a problem with you sleeping. Why? I don't know. Girlfriend then takes her hoodie off because it's very hot on the plane. She's now wearing her vest, which covers up everything, but you can see her strap just a little. OMG! You're such a nasty. Why would you wear something like that in a public place? I hate it when people call my girlfriend names. Don't you call her a name like that, you fat mouth jerk! 
Entitled Mom then presses the assistance button and flight attendant comes over to see what the problem is. Before flight attendant can even ask what the problem is, Entitled Mom shouts at her, This nasty and her ugly boyfriend are harassing me and my son. Entitled Kid was asleep, but now is awake. Flight attendant's manager then comes from around the corner. We were at the front, near where the flight attendants go if they are not doing anything, so if someone was there, they would have heard everything. Flight attendant's manager says, That is not true. I have heard everything. Well, then you know that they were harassing us. No, they weren't. This young lady was asleep, and you started having a go at her boyfriend and then called her a nasty. Entitled mom, realizing she has lost. I don't want to sit near such a nasty. Flight attendant, go look in first class to see if there are two seats to share. After five or so minutes, flight attendant comes back saying that there is, An entitled mom gets up and begins to move. Where are you going? To first class. No, you said you didn't want to sit near them, so we are moving them to first class. Entitled mom is speechless. Me and girlfriend say thank you. I give girlfriend my hoodie and my phone so I can get our bags, but manager says they will bring ours over to us. Flight attendant took us over to first class where we were given free drinks and left in peace. Once we got off the plane, we went through security and out to our transfer bus. We sat at the back and entitled mom then got on as well, but luckily she stayed quiet and sat at the front of the bus. Our hotel was the first stop and guess what? Entitled mom and entitled kid were at the same hotel. But what I was not expecting is that there were people waiting for entitled mom, and all we hope is that they don't bother us. Thanks for reading. Sorry it was so long. And congrats to our regenerals of the day, Fluffy Flavor, EG Drone Mind, and Shades of Sadness. That's all for now, but don't be blue. I'll be back soon with more stories for you. Remember to listen to Mr. Reddit every night so your dreams will be wonderful like you are and bright.